It's natural for investors to try to connect important general election results with the direction of stock markets. But a look at history reveals that shareholders are investing in companies, not political parties. Michael Humbert, who is investment strategist at Dimensional Fund Advisors, is a veteran market researcher. He's most generously agreed to discuss with us today what investors need to keep in mind when they read headlines about presidential races and congressional elections and all the like in the news. Hi, Michael. How's it going? It's going great, Murray. Thanks for having me today. You betcha. Uh, elections are vital in the freely elected democratic political system. What does history show, though, about how stocks have performed during periods when Americans are voting on the fate of their elected officials? What we see is during elections, we see and experience that 24-hour news cycle. It's running red hot. The election becomes the dominant narrative in our society mm -hmm. because, as you noted in your introduction, it's incredibly important to us as citizens. But what about us as investors? You know, prudent investors, they care about their goals. They care about the long run. They care about more than just the election cycle. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is that when we look over time is that markets, they tend to go up through these election cycles. Yeah, and I guess it's natural for investors to look for a connection between who wins the White House and which stocks will go where. Uh, but regardless of who wins, data shows that nearly a century of returns uh, prove that uh, stocks keep going up uh, through Republicans, Democratic victories, uh, whoever controls the White House. Think about what the stock market represents. It represents the buyers and sellers in aggregate, reflecting their expectation for the future into prices. And so that market is reflecting uh, their expectations for the election, maybe whoever wins the White House, many policies that might come out of it, maybe pro-business or maybe more social reform. But at the end of it, that's just one input into many inputs that investors are considering when they make their buy and sell decisions. And so focusing on any one input probably would lead to a less than ideal investment experience. Better to focus on a process that considers all available information, one that is anchoring itself off of prices rather than the topic du jour, even if it is something as important as an election. But it, you're uh, not saying that U.S. presidential elections don't have impact on market returns, right? It, many, But there are many other factors, like uh, what foreign leaders do, interest rate changes, changing oil prices, technological advances, just to name a few. Exactly right. And the list goes on and on. We could spend the entire time listening about all the things that investors care about. And, and elections, they're one component of that. Uh, and they're a short-term component of that as well. When we look out over the long term, we see markets, they tend to go up and they go up regardless of the election or the specific circumstances or facts around that individual period. Think about it. It's really a short amount of time when we're focusing on the election. Better to take a long-term view, to better to look out over that long horizon and see that trend where markets tend to go up regardless of who's in the White House. So stay disciplined and uh, turn out the noise. Tune out the noise, I should say. <laughs> Evergreen tenants that I want to be as part of my investment experience, discipline and focus. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you.